From the truth behind Viking DNA to some recent discoveries about our universe, here are 10 great unexpected discoveries that will blow your mind. Tupal of TU-144 It's not every day you find an old Tupal of TU-144 aircraft sitting in the backyard of what appears to be a giant mansion on the side of the road in Kazan. While the true story behind how this aircraft came to be awkwardly parked between the enormous house and its brick wall is vague to say the least, the story behind the aircraft itself is pretty cool. The Tupolev 144 was the USSR's answer to the Concorde supersonic airliner being developed by the British and the French during the 1960s. The Russians took it as a matter of national pride that they needed to build a supersonic airliner even better than their western rivals, and that is how the Tupolev 144 came into existence. But it was an absolute disaster. The Tupolev did fly back in 1968, two months before Concorde. Both of these jets would have been able to go long distances at speeds that were equal to military aircraft. However, at the Paris Air Show in 1973, the prototype Tupolev 144 crashed. If your airplane crashes at an air show, it's definitely not a good start. Further development was delayed, and as a result of this, the Concorde ended up making its commercial flight debut a full year before any Russian air aircraft. Therefore, in this arena, the Soviet machine was defeated. As for this aircraft sitting idle in Kazan, it was probably decommissioned at some time and then left in the backyard of a military base. Viking DNA We typically think of Vikings as incredibly ferocious warriors from Scandinavia with pale white skin and long blonde hair. But in fact, the reality behind Viking DNA is incredibly complex, at least according to an archaeology professor from Simon Fraser University. The professor is a member of an international team of researchers who recently published the results from the biggest DNA sequencing of Viking skeletons ever. After analyzing DNA from the remains of 442 Vikings, researchers were able to discover that not all of them came simply from Scandinavia. Many of them originated in Ireland, Greenland, Ukraine, Poland, and and even Russia. It looks like that between 750 and 1050 AD, the Vikings were already quite diverse. Another interesting discovery was that there was a significant flow of genes going from the British Isles and into Scandinavia, and this was happening even before the age of the Vikings. Also, it's highly likely that the Vikings actually had brown hair rather than blonde hair. This has basically destroyed the previous image that said Vikings were pure-blooded Scandinavian warriors. They actually weren't, as much of their blood was mixed with Europeans and British. This new information also suggests that Vikings were not as terrible as history depicts them. It's likely they were traders who spread out across many regions in Europe, mixing bloodlines everywhere they went. Have you ever taken a DNA test? What did it say about your ancestry? Was there something you didn't expect? Did you learn about a strange long-lost relative? Do you have Genghis Khan's blood in your veins? Let me know what you discovered about yourself in the comments below, then be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. Remember, the best way to stay up to date on all the greatest videos is to subscribe now. Accidental Shipwreck Divers from Finland made an extremely unexpected discovery when they were exploring the depths of the Baltic Sea. They stumbled upon a very well-preserved shipwreck that dates back nearly 400 years. This was a very unique find, as it was a Dutch merchant vessel from the 17th century simply sitting at the mouth of the Gulf of Finland, and nobody even knew about it. It was sitting almost 300 feet 90 meters underwater. While this is not going to revolutionize anything, it's still a pretty unexpected thing to see while trying to investigate the depths of the ocean. Still, this wreck offers a unique chance to investigate the development of a type of ship which sailed all over the world and eventually laid the foundation for the earliest globalization. According to the dive team, the vessel had suffered minor damage but was otherwise in excellent shape. Because of the low levels of salt and the moderate temperature in that part of the sea, vessels are usually able to sit completely unchanged on the seafloor for hundreds of years. The divers even said that the cargo holds were still completely full when they found it. Getting the ship out of the water might be a bit of a challenge, but researchers will likely be able to extract some of the artifacts from the shipwreck to learn more about it. The Microwave Perhaps one of the best unexpected discoveries in history is the microwave. 
These are commonplace items for us today, with at least 90% of American homes owning a microwave, but its creation was a complete accident that happened over 70 years ago when an engineer named Percy Spencer was in the middle of testing a military-grade magnetron and realized his testing had melted his snack. Percy Spencer grew up at the turn of the century in a time when the automobile and electricity were completely foreign concepts, but nonetheless he grew up and got into engineering and eventually joined the navy and learned all about the world and its new and exciting technologies. After the First World War, Spencer landed a pretty good job at Raytheon Manufacturing Company where he became one of their most valued engineers. Then it was during World War II while trying to improve radar technology that Spencer had his little accident. He had a peanut cluster bar in his pocket and when he did his experiment with the magnetron, it melted. It then became evident that microwaves were able to heat things up. He tested the magnetron again using an egg. It made it explode just like you would expect, and the next day he even brought in a bag of corn kernels and popped them using the magnetron. And thus, the microwave was born. Algae produced oil. Algae is not typically very interesting stuff. This is the blue-green ocean fuzz that grows on the sides of ships and floats across the ocean. Algae is everywhere, and until now nobody thought it was very important other than for producing oxygen. But a recent study has shown an unexpected ability of algae. It can actually produce oil. Until now, most scientists believed that only plants could produce oil. This is why things like avocados and olive trees are grown like crazy, because they produce the oils that humans put inside countless products. There is literally oil in almost everything, but the issue is that olive trees and other plants that produce oil take up a shocking amount of room on the planet and contribute a lot to the destruction of biodiversity. With this new study that says algae can produce oil, there could be an oil revolution going on in the next few years that could save time, space, and some environments. Blue-green algae is actually a type of bacteria known as cyanobacteria. And because biologists can genetically modify bacteria super easily, there is some speculation going on that blue-green algae could be modified to yield significant amounts of oil. Though the complexities of how it would be harvested and what exactly that would look like have yet to be investigated. Bronze Age Settlement In Poland, a new and unexpected archaeological discovery uncovered an ancient settlement on the outskirts of Warsaw, and the discovery has been dated to before the time when Jesus was born. The discovery itself was a complete fluke. It happened after a plot of land was being inspected for the construction of a new swimming pool. The excavators were at first thinking they had discovered a small ancient encampment, but it soon turned out that it was an entire settlement over 3,000 years old. This is from sometime in the Late Bronze Age, with the settlement covering over a full acre of land. As you can imagine, the pool was put on hold and a serious archaeological excavation was then underway. The settlement belonged to members of the Lusatian culture, and thousands of years ago their settlement would have been positioned next to a small watercourse. The watercourse is regulated today, but in prehistoric times there would have been a large stream and an abundant source of water. This ancient culture existed throughout the entirety of the Bronze Age and all the way into the Iron Age, stretching across modern Poland, Slovakia, Ukraine, and Germany. Inside this newly found settlement, archaeologists found an outstanding number of artifacts, roughly 1,500 of them. They found fragments of dishes, leather items, ancient ceramics, and even wooded items. Instead of getting a pool, the city got a massive archaeological site that will yield a wealth of knowledge for years to come. Left or Right? For almost forever, scientists have thought that there is a single gene that determines whether a person is going to be left-handed or right-handed. They have believed that there is one dominant gene that causes about 90% of people to favor their right hand. But now, several different studies involving millions of participants have revealed that there are actually dozens of genetic variations that shape which hand you prefer. According to a report for CNN, scientists have stumbled upon the genetic differences associated with preferring your left hand, and these genetic variants result in differences in your brain structure. Prepare to be shocked, because this unexpected discovery is claiming that people who favor their left hand are often going to have better verbal skills than the majority of right-handed people. This new study was conducted by scientists from the University of Oxford, and the results suggest a clear correlation between a higher coordination of language and using your left hand. However, researchers say that the differences were only seen as subtle averages over a very large number of people. 
So this doesn't mean that people who use their left hand are smarter than people who use their right, but it does prove without a doubt that there is something very unique about using your left hand, and it goes far beyond just reaching for a cup of coffee in the morning. Also, this research has shown that left-handed people are more coordinated inside their brains, with the left and right sides of their brains working together in a better fashion. Prehistoric Shark During the excavation of a ranch in Kansas, researchers accidentally stumbled upon the fossil of an undiscovered type of shark that is 91 million years old. This fossil was preserved in sediments which would have been at the bottom of an ancient ocean known as the Western Interior Seaway, which covered much of the middle of North America from between 144 million and 66 million years ago. That was back when North America was literally underwater. The new shark fossil they found was named Cretidus hotonorum, which is a pretty strange scientific name to be honest, but the shark itself was very impressive. It would have been about 17 feet 5 meters or more, and it's one of the best shark specimens ever discovered in North America. The discovery consisted of 134 teeth and a whole bunch of other bones. After deep analysis, biological experts were able to determine its huge body size and even more anatomical data. They believe this would have been a sluggish shark, very similar to a modern sand tiger shark. Life on Venus A new accidental discovery is suggesting there may be life living in the clouds of Venus. That's right, the planet hanging out in our solar system. Telescopes detected unusually large concentrations of a molecule known as phosphine. Don't ask me how a telescope can detect molecules as that's advanced technology that is reserved for million dollar telescopes and advanced labs, but the point is that the molecule they detected is a stinky and flammable chemical usually associated with feces and digestive gas. Basically, the molecule is a sign of rotting microbial activity. So the big question here is who is passing gas on Venus, or more specifically, who is releasing it in the atmospheric layer above the planet's surface? What kind of creatures could possibly be living in the atmosphere of Venus, and why are they living in the atmosphere rather than on the scorching surface of the planet? The short truth is that nobody knows. Venus is a pretty terrible place to live in the first place, with surface temperatures hot enough to melt lead and sulfuric clouds of acid, and it really makes you wonder if there is indeed life thriving there, what it might look like. Are we dealing with some kind of fire monster, or is it just microbes living in the clouds? According to an astrobiologist at the University of Washington, the molecule phosphine does not fit into any ideas of what kinds of chemicals should be in the atmosphere of Venus, and the bottom line is that nobody knows what is going on. You might remember phosphine from the television series Breaking Bad when Walter White prepares phosphine gas to knock out two people who were threatening him. But in real life, phosphine is much more complicated. It contains one phosphorus atom and three hydrogen atoms, and it stinks like garlic and rotting fish. So I guess that's what Venus must smell like. Oldest Star in the Universe one of the oldest known stars in our universe is known as J0815 plus 4729. That's not a great name, but that's what the scientists who discovered it called it. It's located 5,000 light years away from Earth in the Lynx constellation, and according to some new and unexpected research, this star has been hiding some serious secrets. According to a special report from CNN, experts say that this primitive star was formed during the first hundreds of millions of years after the Big Bang, which makes it pretty ancient. The star was likely crafted from the material expelled during the very first supernova of the Milky Way. After astronomers at the W.M. Keck Observatory in Hawaii studied the star extensively, they discovered 16 chemicals inside of its atmosphere, but its chemical composition was found to be very strange, containing unexpected amounts of nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon. Out of all the stars located inside the halo surrounding our galaxy, none of them have been found to contain such enormous amounts of these chemicals. The results of the observation are telling scientists a lot about the earliest times in the universe. Particularly, scientists are learning a lot about the earliest introductions of oxygen into the young universe billions of years ago. This is exciting because we mostly believe that oxygen wasn't even around at the beginning of the universe, and only came into existence inside of intense nuclear reactions inside of giant stars, like our sun. Now, unexpected discoveries at the observatory are shedding some light on how exactly the first objects in the universe were born, and what exactly they are made of. Which unexpected discovery is the most shocking? 
Let me know how you feel in the comments. As always, thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. See you again soon for another amazing video.